So my name is Ognjan Chakalov and um, I started in the 90s by uh, getting two degrees, one in electrical engineering and one in computer science from the Technical University in Vienna. Then I worked uh, 15 years as a self software developer uh, for air traffic control applications. In 2007 I founded my own company uh, and in 2012 I started with LIMS. And uh, let's start with the first qu question. What is a laboratory? Yeah, this is a laboratory. A big worktop, chemicals, laboratory equipment, test tubes and approbates. And this is also a laboratory and we see here some funnels and some uh, pipettes. Here are the pipettes and here are some funnels and the big worktop, some chemicals, some chemicals. Yeah, another picture of a laboratory. Um, yeah, more equipment and a last one. Um, here we see uh, some, oops, here we see some test tubes again and here we have test tubes and here we have uh, automatic pipettes. Yeah, and let's automate this laboratory. And we need a good idea how to automate this laboratory. Yeah, just add a computer and buy Microsoft Office to automate it. And mission complete. This is what gets out if you do it. Um, although this is not so bad. Uh, because when we automate it in this way, the printed out is the specification of what we should do and the handwritten is the result, the results done in the laboratory. And what's really good um, with handwritten things is that you, that you can see if it has been manipulated. If after writing it the first time uh, down, uh, you somehow had to correct it. Um, and this one is a very bad example because it's wholly printed out in a Word document or an Excel sheet and you can't see which is the specification and which are the results of the laboratory work and you can manipulate it uh, afterwards. But uh, the actual result is oh no. Okay, let's start over again with a more scientific approach and let's try to model the laboratory. What can we do? We can start by naming the things in the laboratory. Let's get back to our first picture and name some of the things. Um, here we have maybe the samples in test tubes which we have to analyze uh, in, in the laboratory. And here me, we may have derived uh, products. Um, what are derived products? We take with uh, a laboratory equipment, in this case with a pipette, some part of uh, the sample, one microliter or something like that, add some chemicals to it and maybe they lead to some kind of color reaction and uh, depending on, on that um, how um, saturated the color is we can, um, we can um, uh, figure out how much uh, amount uh, of some special chemical is in the sample. So we have samples we have laboratory equipment, we have external materials, chemicals and other things and we have the derived products. And what we can do now when we have identified the things, we can 
group them, uh, we can create documents um, with these things and when we add, add attributes uh, to, uh, to these uh, things we get the real documents. Let's have a look what, what such a document might look like. Oh, the, oh, we have a very bad picture here but actually um, attributes could be a unique ID, could be uh, the name in this uh, case sodium hydroxide and we ha can have uh, attributes like purity and uh, uh, pu uh, attributes like mo molecular weight and uh, we can group uh, um, documents into collections of such documents describing the things we have in our laboratory. And what have we done so far? We have um, got an information management system. If we look at the um, definition, we have uh, the information stored in a database. And uh, since we use document-oriented model, uh, we use uh, a document-oriented database, so we have collections of uh, documents and they can match as close as possible the real-world document model. We could also have a relational database, but then we should build up a re relational model of, um, of the laboratory and uh, this has one drawback that we would get many tables to represent uh, um, the, the world, uh, in this case the laboratory, and we uh, would need much more uh, tables uh, than documents. What can we do with, uh, with the information stored in the database? We can sort this information, we can query it and aggregate it, and we can um, make management decisions. So as an example, if we have methanol bottles as documents and um, we have them in our external materials collection and every bottle has an attribute like left volume which could be full, half full or empty uh, and what we can do is query uh, the database for all these documents and see if we still have uh, documents, in this case methanol bottles, which uh, uh, have left uh, volume full. And if we don't find bottles who are full, we have to make a management decision and order more uh, methanol bottles. And um, actually um, what um, what the system is, is actually an application and I have chosen a web-based application um, so that it can be used on desktop, tablets or even smartphones. And LIMS is a laboratory information management system. Uh, uh, information management system where documents and collections match the things which you have in the laboratory. And such things could be studies, samples, operating procedures, batches, equipment and uh, external uh, materials. So if we want to take a first look uh, on such, uh, on, on this application, uh, okay this is a bad resolution, let me try if I can make it better so that you can actually see something. Uh, there should be uh, some
Ah, okay. Okay, I hope you can read it now. So let's start the example of, of uh, the limbs. We have uh, here, um, we've logged on as a user and the user has many, uh, can have more than one roles in which he acts. And uh, some of the roles um, have uh, all uh, collections, uh, like in this case, displayed, and some of the collections uh, can have as um, many as uh, one collection to be viewed. Uh, we can query them, we can query all uh, studies in this case, and uh, we can look here at the laboratory. Uh, equipment and we can add uh, columns and uh, we can um, put the column in another position and hide them. And we can even uh, display the table in two columns so that we can maximize uh, uh, the, the space of the, the screen space. And what we also can do is um, uh, ec um, execute actions on, on documents in collections and we can browse also in detail view uh, through uh, the resulting set. Okay, so let's have a look uh, once again at the uh, web application and this time um, we will see um, creating uh, a more complex uh, document, uh, how we enter uh, text. Uh, here we have a drop down. Here we have a reference uh, from where we can uh, copy a lot more of uh, data. And this is the so called edit mode when we um, can change attributes of a document. And when we save it, we can go in the view mode where we just want to view through the resulting document. And we can even drill down in references. And that's it. So to zoom up, uh, the information management system's features are that we group complex documents into collections based on their schema, uh, that um, we make um, collections not having only one schema, uh, but it can be slightly different since the requirements will change over time. We have a role-based document access so that depending on the user role you only see some, um, some collections and depending on the state of the uh, document uh, you have only um, uh, different actions available. And um, also we have uh, document import, document export and reporting. And since we are here all developers, 
Uh, I would like to, to show you how some of the um, things were implemented in this uh, a application. And let's take a look at uh, an example of a document, in this case a stat study. And as some of you who know already MongoDB may have uh, uh, noticed uh, that I use the same words documents and collections like in MongoDB. And that's what it is. Uh, LIMS documents are one-to-one -one MongoDB documents and LIMS collections are one-to-one -one MongoDB collections. And the LIMS itself uh, is uh, a React and Redux uh, web application uh, with a Node.js server. Uh, and the technologies used here uh, is, as I explained, MongoDB. And uh, the second most important thing is JSON schema. Um, and uh, that's something I would like to um, concentrate a little bit further. So uh, JSON schema is an ITF um, internet draft. And you can find all uh, the information on jsonschema.org. And what is actually JSON schema? A JSON schema describes uh, the JSON document. We have here a very simple schema. We have here uh, a JSON document with first name, last name, and an age. And we see here the properties are first name, and the type of this property first name is a string. The property last name is also a, a string, but the property age is an integer and uh, it must be positive. So with JSON schema I can describe a JSON document. We can go now a little bit farther and uh, describe um, the studies document uh, a, a little bit more precisely. And here we can have required fields. ID, this is the MongoDB ID. We have is a required field, then schema URL. That's an interesting thing. I can write an URL in the document which points to the schema which describes the document. Um, so I have a self-described document. The document describes itself with which she schema it should be validated. Uh, I can have here um, the next required thing is name. And the name attribute is, is a string. And we can use here uh, regular expressions to describe this string. And, uh, this pattern simply means that it must start with a letter, continue with a letter or uh, a digit, and it may have an underscore or a dash, but nothing else, no white space. Uh, and here we can see a declaration where uh, we have a lookup value, so the type may be only one of these values. So uh, this is all of this is, is JSON schema and in that way I can decide on the, on the server side as an example if one particular JSON uh, object uh, is valid data to its self-referencing schema or not. And only if it is valid data I can put it into the database. So what I can do further is enrich this uh, JSON schema document with even more attributes so that I can generate the user interface from this schema. By knowing if a field is read-only, by adding display orders here, I can uh, 
automatically generate um, this UI. This UI here is edit mo in edit mode. I have uh, I distinguish between edit mode and display mode um, because in, in in edit mode I have to show up things like delete this attribute if it is possible or add this attribute. Here I see all attributes which are possible, and in this in this in read only mode or display mode I can uh, only um, show the attributes which are actually um, in the JSON document. And if... Yes? Uh, do you use the JSON schema in the front end or do you use it in the back end or both? Both. I actually... Uh, but I, I, I use it in the back end for validating the documents and I use it in the front end for generating the user interface and showing uh, um, user input errors also. It's the same thing. Yes? How do you migrate between those? Because hmm? I'm, how do you migrate between images? So the problem is if I have um, draft 04 now and now I change something, this could be um, building on the previous version so I can easily migrate it or I can have uh, quite a problem. No, 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 no. Migration is quite easy because I have self-reference data. You have seen the schema URL. So uh, if I already have, uh, and I don't uh, need to have uh, in a collection in MongoDB, I can have different schemas. It, it doesn't have to be pure. So the only thing I have is the uh, when I create a, a new document, then I create it with the with the schema which is now valid and if I have uh, a previous version of of, uh, uh, of documents that it will reference a previous version of the schema yeah Queries get get m more complicated, but uh, that's right. But um, I, I didn't have the problem uh, to migrate between a, a different previous uh, schema version and the new one, because uh, you have to comply to the regulatory um, rules at the time of. Uh, when this system is validated. So you can't go too very fast through these versions. Let's say uh, for the couple, for the last couple 12 months, you have the, the old version, then you have a couple of queries for this old version. You can still have them, but uh, at some special time they won't uh, be needed anymore. Although you can have as many queries as you want. So uh, actually even uh, the queries won't uh, get too complicated. You just will have more than one query for the thing. Okay, and then aggregate them again, so yeah, kind of yeah. Yeah, yes, yes. But in, in the la uh, laboratory, it's not, you don't have the problem to migrate. Although migration is also possible if you display it in uh, display mode with the old URL and if you go into view mode with the new or URL then you can clean up the document manually to accord to the new schema.
in this case, uh, I don't. Um, I mean, communication between between uh, server and client is HTTPS. I must authenticate against the server to to get this information. And uh, in in my case, um, I don't see a problem here. I mean. Uh, the front end is is has to can can trigger all the actions. So, what should be the problem here? I don't know. I I I don't think that it is a problem. I don't. I don't give it the users. I give it my application. Yeah, but I mean, yeah. it's JavaScript, so you can inspect it. But in the end, like, um, I, I mean, I would agree. It feels feels weird to expose all of that. But on the other hand, like in reality, it's just security through obscurity, because yeah, I I can anyway go in, and if I really want to attack you, I I just figure that out by myself. Like, Obviously, yeah, I mean, it's th this way you just make it easier to, to expose, like, oh, yeah, in this regular expression there's a mistake, so I can, I can inject something, but, um, yeah. It doesn't end in the, uh, in the database. Uh, you send the document to the database, and then it is stored in the database. And um, what I have also is, is uh, uh, in the database I have uh, change management. So uh, every record in my database is, is secured by a hash code. And that's how I see if this uh, has been manipulated and not. And uh, this hash code could uh, go as far as going to a public uh, time code uh, server. And by this you can see uh, who has manipulated it? If it was someone who is manipulating the data from from outside, so. But uh, like, imagine if you, for example, this regular expression for a studio number. Yeah. Um, so I see you, you check for A to C and whatnot. Yeah. Um, so that's pretty fine. But um, um, let's say you have a regular expression which just matches for um, whatever word character. But that means there are some word characters which are uh, invisible, and then there are some code tricks how you can get invisible characters and then actually inject code. There's code, uh, I forgot. OK, the name. I know. Uh, code uh, injection, yeah. You basically, yeah, you could, somebody could inject code into that part of the string. And if it would be a public website, then you have like a process thing. You basically expose like what okay. you actually check for. Okay. But it's 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 just security yeah. security because otherwise people can Yeah. Okay, although uh, never do this in a public website for a uh I, I, I mean this kind of systems um yeah. you don't do them through through public websites. You do them in a VPN. And, and then you have access to this, and then you have to, before that, you won't even get the application. So. Because of the data you're storing, right? Yeah, it's because of the data I'm storing. That's sensitive data. And uh, that's the same reason why, uh, although uh, in Internet of Things, uh, you, you also use them over VPN, so that all uh, these things who can happen uh, stay in the closed uh, network. Yeah. Uh, you must add this layer of security for, for such things. But, but in the end, it sounds quite like a general document management system, like, I don't know, SAP or... Uh, uh, yes, that's what... Does Yeah. <laughs> yes, but or oh, Office or oh, Microsoft Office, no, 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 no. SharePoint. Yeah. SharePoint, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, what I wanted to show is here the example where you can uh, log in, and 
So actually what I have done is that all of this is purely um, done by uh, extending a little bit JSON schema. And so you see here with the plus you add that attribute, uh, you add the string add as, and as soon as you have added an attribute you also can delete this attribute. And this is a uh, drop down to choose uh, the different um, and this is an object into an object. Data, uh, there was no place to put it on. Data is just another JSON object with uh, sponsors, study number, and so on. And this was the edit view, and this is the, the read only view where you only look at the thing. And here is with, with, with signs, you can, as soon as you first have signed the document, you have the whole audit history, what has changed. Okay, what have I used for this? Uh, since I started uh, four years ago, the schema validator was uh, TV4, and the, J uh, the form generation is done in, 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 in JSONary and I have written a React wrapper for JSONary. Uh, if you would start um, a new project with this then we have AGV as one of the most emerging um, schema validators and uh, for form generation there is a very interesting uh, pro uh, project called uh, libform react and actually it generates uh, JSON schema forms based on Redux form and this is very awesome. Uh, there is also uh, a Mozilla project react JSON schema form uh, yeah but if I had to choose from those two I would choose the first one. So um, the me message uh, from, from this presentation is that in 2017 uh, there are still a lot of people who think a PC and Microsoft Office is enough to automate a critical business process and actually we need more enlightenment here and for developers don't be afraid to model a business process and don't be afraid to build your own tools. So, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Yes, and it, I called it an information. So they are in the domain, I'm not in the medical. Yep, yeah. There are quite some critical processes on this document. When is someone allowed to add some data here? And yes. And then afterwards, you're talking about processes. Yeah, that's right. I show now only one part because uh, this was a React uh, a meeting and I wanted to fully explain what uh, JSON schema is and uh, how we put this into the database. The next step to make from this uh, thing a process oriented system, uh, I have used two things. One, one are uh, the actions which you define on an object. Yes, on a JSON document, on a JSON document, no, on one JSON document. Now, uh, you have easy actions like uh, create new, edit, delete. But now we get more complicated things. The first thing to add a process, we called it signing objects. At the moment where you sign an object, you have a state of this object. The, the signing state or just the state of this object. And now you have to um, define 
uh, what the process is and the process is the states with this uh, object can get like it is committed it is uh, done it is reviewed it is checked it is um, uh, finished yeah and the actions uh, you define which uh, uh, the uh, if an action is available on the object depends on the state and on the data in the object and that's how you put the workflow into an object so you can have many documents but depending on the state of this document and the data of this document you will get different actions available on this document so it could be allowed to delete it before you have committed it but after you have committed it it is not allowed to delete yeah No, the, uh, I don't combine them. I, I, the, you, uh, because I have uh, this uh, complex document module, I don't need to combine too many documents to get a real workflow. And, and how you print them out, or is some render at the end? At the end, I have a reporting tool, uh, self written. Actually, what this reporting tool is uh, doing is, uh, a uh, is generating a web page and th from this web page we generate uh, with uh, Vika HTML to PDF, uh, the PDF. But to generate the, uh, uh, the web page I'm using a templating language and I'm using Dust.js. And in Dust.js I have written extension to make MongoDB queries and to make not only MongoDB queries but MongoDB functions. So by using the MongoDB aggregation pipeline I can write very complex queries. I can get the result in the Dust.js um, template and what I can do is print them in, in, in a table and if it is only one table then I even can export it as a CSV because Excel somehow is still one of the most <laughs> used export formats or I can format it beautifully as a PDF with, with uh, an index and with headers and footers and print it out. And you can combine documents here? Yes, okay. yes. In the reporting I must be able to combine documents. MongoDB has, uh, I, I've done this um, because I started when there was no uh, way to make a join in, in MongoDB but in the, in the meantime I even can join with MongoDB uh, join and combine documents and aggregate them through the aggregation pipeline even such complex things as standard deviation or things like that can be can be done.